Hi, and welcome to this video. In this video, I will be discussing the difference between a service industry and manufacturing industry. And the reason for that, because we need to make it clear that there is a big difference between manufacturing and service. And in this chapter, chapter three in particular, you will see that there are a lot of differences. One of the differences that the authors start talking about it on page uh, 72, is the culture of the service uh, industry. And that's basically uh, where he said, these are totally different. These are diff different economics and these are um, should be dealt as a different industries. Uh, some people, they would say, okay, well, I, I took a class and they're talking about the same thing, satisfying customers, improving uh, efficiency and, and so on. Yes, that's true. We the general concept, they're talking about the same thing. However, the specific details would be different. So for example, I wanna share some of the things that uh, changed uh, uh, that is mentioned on chapter three. Uh, one of the things that the author said that on page 72, that manufacturing uh, were uh, focusing on efficiency of production, uh, not attendance of people. So there is a difference. Now we're, one thing is we're dealing with uh, process efficiency, manufacturing pro efficiency, and now the other side, which is the services, talking about how to uh, behave and how to talk with, with people. It's, uh, it's, it's totally different now. So one is dealing with people, dealing with a human, and the other, other one dealing with efficiency. Uh, however, also he did mention there are some similarities such as the uh, uh, service delivery. It's similar to uh, product delivery. So we're, we're, we're talking about there are some differences and there are so, some similarities as well. However, the difference is more than the, uh, the similarities. Uh, I love the quote from the IBM uh, CEOs dur during the 1990s, where he said, uh, uh, the, 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 I, as you know, the IBM tr uh, moved from uh, production into a service industry and they've been very successful until this day. And so they, the, the CEO of the IBM in the 1990, he uh, authored a book uh, which is uh, named as uh, Elephant, who, said, who, says that, who says elephants cannot dance? Who says elephant, elephants cannot dance? And in this book, he did mention about the differences and how he moved uh, from uh, production industry to the service. It's a very good book to read, actually. Uh, so I like the quote uh, on page 73 when he said, uh, in, uh, in, in service, you, you don't do product. You don't produce product to sell. What you have, you have uh, knowledge. You have, um, you have uh, uh, skills. Uh, so th this is this is important because what we do in production is we make a product and then we sell it. However, in in the service industry, we don't make product. We uh, have skills, we have knowledge, and then which basically um, these these knowledge and skills created at the same time it, 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 it sold and, and it's created and sold at the same time. So basically you, um, you sell it first and, and, and you make it and you sell it. So you can't store it, you can't save it. It's, it's totally different. So what I'm saying here is um, in service, you don't have the capability to store service. You sell it the right way, right away when the customer comes. And this is basically what the, IBM CEO came, uh, came with this idea saying, okay, we have to be really careful. There are totally different economies. Um, these are um, not similar. And he shared in his book how, um, how companies could move from service, uh, from production to service. And uh, again, in the service, we selling knowledge and skills and which is uh, created at the same time you deliver it. To the, to, the, to, the, to the customer. However, in production, you create, you produce a product, you can store it, and then uh, you can sell it uh, on a later uh, date. 
uh, uh, now we're going to move into a more specific and detailed on what are these differences. So number one is in the differences between production and services is the services are intangible. And as you see that there's uh, in a service, there's no physical presence. And this is cannot be expressed by detecting the five senses. So it is, it's not possible to taste uh, uh, or smell or hear the service. It is intangible basically, but however, this intangibility make the service industry as a unique uh, market and it's different than uh, production. Uh, the reputation of the service industry, the quality of the experience, the ability to offer free trials and appeal of the package are very important. And uh, what we need to do is here, we uh, as a suppliers, it needs to make the intangible services seem both tangible and tasteable. So you, you need to be really smart on how you um, package your service and make sure that you give the opportunity for uh, customers to feel your service, to uh, touch the service. Uh, a good example that I could provide you is the tax. Now we are in the season of tax and tax preparation. Uh, even the turbo taxes, if you hear about this company, turbo tax is one of the leaders in preparing taxes. They offer uh, the service for free uh, based on their uh, website. However, if you go to one of the grocery stores, you will see that the software is available for people to buy it from, uh, from the shelves of the grocery store. So now they turn their intangible service into something touchable. Um, so this is, uh, this is a unique strategy to market your uh, service. However, being intangible service, that's gonna put a lot of pressure on, uh, on the customer because there's something called, a phenomenon called uh, post, uh, post purchase stress, which basically um, there's, once you use the service, you cannot return it. It's not like a product. You used it, did not work for you. You go to the grocery store and you return it. Now the service industry, there's nothing guarantee that will, um, that will help you to remove this worry. And there will be a stress on the customer that, okay, what if I don't like this service? Is there any way that I could return it? Uh, now, some companies, they say, yeah, if, you, uh, if you're not happy with a customer, we'll return you 100% all of your, uh, of your money. So they're starting some advertising movement where they want to remove the worry from the customer, guarantee, money, money back guarantee. This is where you hear it and you say, okay, don't worry, we can, we can fix it for you. If you don't like it, that's okay. We're not gonna charge you for it. But uh, again, the intangibility of, of service make it different than production. Uh, and the uh, production company that are not, skill, not, not skillful, they don't have the skill at the brand creation, that might destroy their business. They have to be able to create a really nice brand where they could succeed in the market, such as, Wal such as, such as Walmart, where they uh, don't produce anything, but they were very successful in creating their brand and selling the service to the, uh, to the customer. And now we're moving into the second, uh, the second characteristic or the second difference between production and service. The second uh, difference between production and uh, manufacturing is the variation of the process itself. Now, once it comes to production, you will see that the process has been designed and then the manufacturing uh, process set up and they will start producing products. And if you look into the variation between a product and another will be very little variation. At least that's the common situation. Uh, 
Now in the service industry, there is a very difficult to manage variation. Variation is the difference between one service and another. And therefore, because we're dealing with a human, it's uh, hard to manage this variation. Uh, so what some businesses, uh, what they did, they give uh, some variation, a little variation uh, by giving uh, a little freedom to their employees. Uh, however, some other businesses such as Burger King, for example, they give uh, the flexibility for their employees to customize orders. And they saw this as an advantage for them. This is a market advantage, competitive advantage for them. Uh, however, they, if, if you wanna go with a service industry that will customize and give uh, freedom, you need to make sure that you don't give too much freedom because that's going to destroy and damage the economies, the economies of these of these businesses. As an operations planner, what you need to do is you need to create a streamline for your business, and um, you need to uh, make sure to give enough flexibility for your employees and you need to anticipate failure. So accept that there's something gonna go wrong and how, how are you gonna fix that? And estimate the number of the, the wrong thing that will go. So put like a, a measure that will help you to stay within these limits. Uh, so I'm assuming that you're dealing with the customers if you said, okay, well, I will allow maybe one customer a month to complain to me, that could be something that you could do. So as long as you have a measure, something that you measure, number of complaints, uh, uh, wait, wait uh, time, how, how, many, how many minutes the customers are waiting in the line. So something that will help you to plan ahead and create some corrections plan if needed. Now we're moving into the third one, consumption of, uh, of the service. This is the third difference between uh, production and services. As you know that products, and we did mention that at the beginning of the video, where we said uh, uh, products uh, can be made, uh, can be manufactured, stored, passed through the distribution system, uh, until it's bought by a customer. However, the majority of the service industry uh, uh, or service businesses, uh, they have to be used as they created. Uh, so there, there's no way to store these uh, services. These services are uh, sold then produced and consumed. So this is the difference. It's in the production is you sell and then the customer will consume it, will use it. Now for the service, it is sold first and then consumed. So it is, it is kind of a difference uh, where again, in, in production uh, produced, uh, products and goods are and goods are produced and produced sold and consumed whereas the service are uh, sold then produced and consumed so this is a big difference one more time I'm going to say it uh, in in the production industry you will see that products are produced sold and consumed now where the service itself is sold, then produced, then consumed. Uh, however, there's one mistake that I wanna highlight here, which is made by many uh, product companies who's moving from, uh, from production to service, that they haven't, pro they haven't uh, planned very well for the process. Process design is important. You need to spend much time to, to design the process through where the customer will be moving. So the movement of customers, this is really uh, important. 
And uh, the companies need, these production companies, they need to visualize the movement, streamline the process before they're moving into the service. And the reason for that, because quality is different uh, from uh, production and versus services, the difference coming from where? Now, quality happens in real time. Yeah. Process, quality process cannot be the same, no way. So it's, if there's anything, any defect, any problem happened, the customer will experience this problem right away. So it is a real time experience. There is no way to say, okay, if I have a defect, it's all right, we'll go back and fix the process. No, this is, you can't do that because it is a real time experience. So if the customer did not enjoy the experience, that's it, basically, there's no way to fix it. Uh, so it is a real time, it is a real time quality uh, and you have to have some strategies to handle these uh, real time qualities. Num number four of this uh, differences between production and services that uh, in the customer's mind, there's uh, difficult to separate service from the people who's providing the service. And therefore, uh, the person that they encounter when they buy, uh, they are really important to judge the quality of the service. It is a part, these people are part of the service itself. And the behavior of these people will uh, impact the, uh, the customer satisfaction. So the frontline interaction with the customers, uh, these are really important. And if you, if you treat your employees as a human, then that's most likely will pass to your customers. What you need to do is to offer all the flexibility to your employees, make them happy, where they pass this happiness to your customers as well. It is a challenge and we should be aware of, and these are not machines where you say, okay, if I don't maintain the machine, I could fix it later on. No, this is something you're dealing with people and you need to make sure that when you deal with people, uh, these people will uh, encounter these customers and they will pass their experience. If they like the, cust if they like the company, they will pass their uh, excellent experience and excellent feedback with their with your customer as well. And that will eventually result in a, a success in your business. Now moving to the next one. Number five of the differences is uh, the services are brishable, uh, which means these are very delicate. Uh, services uh, cannot be stored as a product, as a production, as a product. Uh, so in this, in, if you produce extra amount of products, you can store them and use them later on. However, the service, uh, it's not uh, storable. And therefore, uh, what does that mean? It's you need to use a very accurate forecasting system where you forecast what would be the demand for your customers. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna end up with uh, losing a lot of money because you're wasting time and, and a lot of resources uh, if, you don't, um, if you don't accurately estimate the demand. So you need an accurate forecasting system where you are able to exactly know what's the demand for your service. The sixth uh, item for the differences, these are uh, the ownership of service are not passed to the buyer. Uh, ownership of a service does not pass the buyer when people basically buy a product the ownership passes to them. However, it's different in the service industry. Imagine that you're taking a taxi or you are um, uh, purchased, if you purchase the airline ticket, you're not basically buying the airplane. You're not buying the taxi. You're basically renting the service. Um, and, and because you're renting the service, uh, whether it's skills or service you, you're paying, uh, X amount of dollars to use the service. Uh, as a result, 
Uh, there is some, uh, and there's there's a need for service industry to value the moment of purchasing these services, the moment of of contract, and find a way to emphasize, increase the value uh, while the the the, pro, the 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 service is in the process. So it is really important to know that there is no. Uh, uh, ownership transfer to the owner. The owner is the, the, the customer basically renting the time and the resources that they need to, to finish a goal, specific goal. And as a, as a service industry, what you need to do, you need to uh, uh, emphasize on the moment of, of writing the contract or on using the service and you need to make it more valuable to the customer. The seventh item on the differences would be the existence of the service process. And what I mean by this is when people use service, they must submit themselves to the service provider's uh, process. They have to go with whatever instructions they give you. Uh, however, whenever somebody buy a product, they are in control of that product. They could do whatever they want to do with it. Whether they, they want to break it, they could you know, um, give it away, they could use it. Uh, they, they could ignore then instructions of using that product. Whatever they want to do with it, they can. Uh, but in the service, no, it's uh, the customer has to submit uh, to the service instructions. They have to listen to them. And that could be something <laughs> not uh, good for the customer because as a human, we, do, we don't like people to control us. We need to have some freedom. And therefore, with this freedom, uh, it's gonna be, bring more uh, satisfaction. However, uh, this particular submitting themselves to the, to the contract of the service could be, um, affected it negatively, but now how would you assure your customers that if they follow the, the steps, they will be happy? This is where your role is. You need to give them some guarantee to help them, to help them um, remove any worry uh, from, your, from the experience of buying your service. So it's different, it's different, different than production. Let's move on to the next one. Now for the number eight, as I mentioned in the previous one, this, that you're taking the control of the customers and you ask them to submit themselves to the service provider. And that's what number eight, when customers buy services, they don't have much choices uh, in freedom. They must surrender themselves to the service and they have to follow the delivery process that designed by the supplier for them. So in this basically, that's take some of the control that they have. And um, as a human beings, we are, don't, we like to control. We like to, we hate to, to being out of control. The purchase of these, uh, services um, basically invade their personal space. What we need to do is, um, and of course, this will raise emotional issues. And as as a as a provider, service provider, you need to tackle these issues. So, how would you um, assure these customers to provide them with a good quality and as you know, they're out of control. They have no choice. They have to listen to you as you are the one who is providing the service. So you need to assure them that you're going to provide them a good service. Yeah. So why, that, why is that? Because the lack of control means that the new customers must be reassured. Um, we need to assure them. We need to say, especially the new customers, we need to provide them with the helpful people that will provide them support after the service. Uh, we need to maybe um, offer them a familiar brand, which they hear about it. They have a good reputation. 
so there should be something different. Design a process in a, in a more efficient way uh, that produce the uh, defects during the service. However, uh, with an experienced customer, that could be different. They, some, some companies such as the airlines, they provide some frequent flyer program, which they offer, offer better service for these experienced customers. Again, you're taking control from the customers. You need to handle it. You need to assure them that you're going to provide them a good uh, quality of service, such as after the service, uh, after the service uh, help desk or uh, money back guarantee, something like this, because you are taking the control and they submitted all their abilities and control to you and you are in control of them now. Again, we're human beings. We don't like to be out of control. We need to, uh, we need the service, but however, we need to also uh, reassure that this is going to be a good service. And as a, as a service provider, your role is to tackle this emotional impact. Now we're moving into the next uh, difference. Number, number nine difference would be the service environment. The design uh, of the service environment could impact the, the, the behavior of the customer. Uh, for example, the, the design of a, uh, of, of a restaurant, the layout, the, uh, the, the color, uh, the lighting, these could affect the behavior of uh, a customer. Uh, some of the factors that will impact the customer's behavior could be the uh, sight appeal, could be the size perception, shape, color, sound, scent, uh, or you know flexibility, signs, uh, symbols. These are all some factors that will impact the service uh, and impact the, the behavior of the customer. Uh, so, for example, people buy more uh, if there is a specific type of music is played, uh, or maybe different color of, of lights are there, or different smells uh, that offered to the customer to, to smell. So, these many factors who would like to move to the service, they should consider these uh, effects in the physical settings of of their businesses. Uh, physical environment are really important uh, and it doesn't impact the uh, customer behavior during their purchase. So we should consider it and we should uh, study it very well and, and that will, uh, will be an, uh, an impact factor to make you a leader in the market. The last difference between production and services, that services are based on performance. From that moment, when you see the customer, you start performing and uh, acting to convince the customer and build a relation, a stronger relationship with the customer. So service industry puts a great emphasis on the service encounter, that moment of true when the suppliers uh, and interact with the buyers. It is a moment where the service industry should invest, emphasize, service industry should emphasize on that moment to strengthen the relationship with the customer and uh, assuring them that they will deliver uh, a benefit for them, promising them uh, with benefits. After I dis after I discussed with you the differences between uh, production environment and service and environment, now we're moving into uh, the part where we have to make a decision. And uh, making a decision to switch from production to a service, it's critical and we need to consider different uh, factors. Uh, in the books, they provided six steps that will help um, manufacturing companies to move into the service. So let's go over these six steps uh, to understand exactly what they should do in order to move from production to service. Step number one, det determine the factors 
causing a rise in the service demand or price pressure to see whether these are long-term or short-term. So what you need to do is look into the factors. Why do you need to move into this, to the service? Is there any pressure from the market? Is the customers are looking for a lower price, which might impact the quality? So we need to study these and see if these are long-term or short-term. Number two, step number two, examine the margins all margin elements to discover the value and price of service. You need to research customers to see if they are willing to buy your service. Are they willing to pay for the new package of services? This is something that you should do. Uh, again, examine the margins. Are the customers willing to pay for it or not? Number three, step number three, uh, take a hard Headed decision about organization's ability. You need to know, is the organization able to cope with a new change? Should they move to the, uh, to the service? Do we have the capability? Maybe we don't have the capability to move to the service. And therefore, now this is not a good decision. If you do have the capability, then maybe this is a good decision you could do it. Number five, or number four, actually, step number four, decide whether to move toward a product oriented or to move toward a service offer. So based on all the factors that you study in step number one, based on the long short term, uh, based on the margin elements, based on the capability, now number four, step number four, you need to make the decision whether to stick with manufacturing or move to a service uh, environment. Number five would be you need to decide whether to move toward a product orientation or uh, to, uh, number five is to move into service, agreed, uh, construct a clear articulated. If you decided, if you decided to move into, if you decided to move into the service industry, what you need to do, you need to, to create an articulated uh, detailed plan, uh, business plan, to help you moving into the service business. So the plan is really important. What is, how are you gonna do it? How are you gonna switch the change? Number six is uh, create a change management uh, plan. How would you uh, change uh, the resources that you have, the acquisition, the, the human, the funds needed to, to move from uh, the service? And there's uh, a lot of um, detailed uh, on what you can do uh, in order to move from uh, service and from from service to production. Uh, so when I said on number step number six, step number six is to change to manage a problem. Change management uh, change management could be a problem, and therefore you need to look into how how would you create the plan to to do the to, to the to do the change and what needs to change when a company moves into service uh, operation strategies and management next management of people and attitude of the human capitals sales also that could be different brand strategy and management financial management and pricing marketing these all should be changed when you write your strategic plan, the detailed plan on what do you need and how you change switch from uh, production to service. With that said, I want to thank you. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Read the book and um, this will provide you with a great knowledge on what you, what you need to consider when you switch from production to service. And with that said, thank you so much and I'll see you in a, another video.